you all remember. Most of my friends who were not on the team were already planning what they were doing that night after the game. In hindsight, I thank them because I had a great night after the game. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> the Bulldogs were probably three touchdown favorites at least, maybe more. Watching film on them and comparing scores, my realistic and experienced older self concluded that they told me we couldn't win. I mean, really, the scores speak for themselves. Landon, 15. St. Stephen's, 14. Bullis, 61. St. Stephen's, 14. Leading up to the game, I thought we had no chance. I had no confidence in myself or my team. Although knowing the importance of confidence, I made it my duty not to let any of the te my teammates know how I was feeling. I explained to anyone with doubts that we had more than a chance to win, and that we were going to win. I knew I was lying to them, though. Since Matt was only a kicker and a friend, I confessed to him that night how I really felt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt could have easily nodded his head in agreement, but he didn't. Instead, he shot back at me, stood up for his opinion, and confidently explained to me that these are the types of games sports miracles are all about. That no matter how crazily lopsided the odds may be, you always have a chance to win, no matter what. All you have to do is believe in the unbelievable. These are the games that you dream about, Frank. Not the ones where you are favored to win, but the ones where you are not. These are the games people remember, because victory is so improbable. I'm paraphrasing a tad, of course, so please don't make Matt out to be some sports guru now or something. He went on by quoting a bunch of obscure lines from underdog sport movies, but I got his point. He still gave me exactly what I needed, a wake-up call. I let my fear of being beaten and humiliated in front of hundreds of people, people conquer my normally confident outlook, especially in sports. Whether the odds are one to one or a million to one, you always have a chance. After that, I dismissed any previous doubts or uncertainties that I may have had before then and went into the game knowing we were going to win. Everyone in this auditorium knows how that game ended. The hype and treacherous conditions surrounding the game made the environment like nothing else imaginable. Every player was playing for more than just a win for their team. It was a win for their school and for their community. That win personified a year-long altercation of social media squabbles. The emotions and ecstasies that engulfed the stadium was felt by each and every one of those 49 players, seven coaches, and hundreds of loyal fans in the Landon community. They all know how much bigger it was than just a game. Still to this date, it was the greatest win I've ever been a part of like nothing else I'd ever experienced. It was special for anyone involved. Maybe it was all the unidentified supplements Andrew Mitchell gave our defense to drink before the game. <laughs> or maybe it was just dumb luck. <laughs> all I know is that that game told me one important thing that I'd somehow forgot. That there's always a chance, and if you quit before something even starts, then you'll never know. The wind demonstrated to me the character, pride, and perseverance of the land community, which makes it so special and unique. Knowing that there's always a chance to give you confidence. No task is too impossible. No goal is unattainable. While it's definitely crucial in sports, I understand having confidence in sports doesn't quite measure up to its importance in the real world. I understand having the courage to speak up on your opinions and what you believe in is even more significant. Essentially, ethics is what you determine to be right and wrong. Whether that's your opinion on religion, the death penalty, cheating, bullying, the list goes on and on. But it's important to determine for yourself what you deem to be right and wrong. To act and live by those principles once you've established them, regardless of potential humiliation or social backlash. Having confidence and reassurance in your own values will make it easier to speak up and act out in difficult situations. Speaking up and challenging established norms will only better yourself and your surroundings. Have confidence in what you say and do. Chef from South Park once said, there's a time and place for everything, and it's called college. <laughs> I think the same could be said for high school and childhood in general. Now is the time to speak out of turn, make mistakes, push the limits and take risks. Even if those decisions aren't socially acceptable, you only learn and gain experience from them. Force yourself in uncomfortable situations and challenge yourself. Have confidence in your abilities to overcome those challenges. So take some chances and get yourself into a little trouble while you still can. Land is a much more forgiving place in the real world. You will learn from your mistakes and it will only benefit you in the long run. So take that long outside three-pointer, try out for the play, challenge that established idea, play that difficult music piece, wear that risque outfit, stop that kid from being bullied, ask your dream girl if she wants to go upstairs. <laughs>
have confidence to take risks and experience and achieve things that you might not have been able to. Back in 8th grade, I was fairly similar to how I am now. I still considered more of a dumb, a reverend, jokester athlete than someone with any sort of artistic capability. I do, however, have one artistic talent, though, I guess you could call it, and that's quoting and acting out movie lines. However, my friends and family would probably disagree and consider it more of a nuisance than anything else. I don't know what it is about doing it, but I love it. My mom, being the keen, perceptive woman that she is, caught on to this tendency of mine and sat me down once again. She then actually seriously suggested I try out for the school play. Almost speechless, I laughed in her face and told her no way. That would be social suicide. <laughs> she continued pestering me about it for weeks and explaining me the importance of having confidence to try new things, simply for the experience of it. So lo and behold, she ended up convincing me. And early that fall, I tried out for the middle school's production of Shakespeare's What You Do About Nothing. Come try out time, I was definitely out of my element and in uncharted territories, to say the least. But recalling the message my mom had enlightened me with, I took a chance and went with it. I disregarded any social backlash I might get from my friends for doing something that might be considered lame or uncool, because I knew it was something I enjoyed doing. So I forgot about how they might perceive or judge me for doing something outside the norm. I eventually earned the role of Leonardo and had a great experience while performing the play. Although I haven't returned to the theater stage since then, I was content with my decision. It's something I can always look back on and say at least I tried out. But having the confidence to take a chance outside the norm, I was able to attain relationships and experiences with people and in places that I probably wouldn't have if I had avoided something new and outside the norm. So have confidence to try that unusual food. Introduce yourself to that strange person. Read that weird book. Watch that bizarre movie. Listen to that different music. Travel somewhere foreign. You will never know what your true tastes and preferences are until you've experienced all there is to experience. And that is impossible. And you know what? If you don't like it, then you don't have to try it again. And that's the beauty of it. But at least you tried it for yourself instead of listening to someone else about it. Experiences are like relationships. You can never have too many. It is an unquenchable void in your life. The key to attaining these relationships and experiences is having the confidence to take a risk, go out on a limb, and experience something new. As I know many of you have the pleasure of conversing with Mr. Sorkin, you know firsthand that he never fails to give inspiring and encouraging pieces of wisdom. He once said to me, be yourself and always try to be interesting, remarkable, and different. Interesting people are what makes the world go round. He went on by quoting a philosopher by the name of Rollo May who said, conformity is the resistance to life. I enjoyed this piece of wisdom and thought I'd share it with you all. Having the confidence to be different and interesting will make you memorable. Don't conform to the wills of society standards and be just another irrelevant, forgotten follower. You have one life to live. Dare to be great. Live confidently and leave your impression on everyone and everywhere you go. Speak up and act according with your own personal values. Your brilliant insights don't hold any value until you've enlightened someone else with them. Each and every one of you has some extraordinary and incredible talent that makes you, you. Whether you like that talent or gift you've been presented with or not, embrace it and utilize it. You have to understand that you are the mirror images of your parents, whether you like it or not. It's a difficult and almost impossible reality to escape. But that doesn't mean they're always right. They are only human after all. It's important for you to decide on your own how you want, what your opinions and ethical positions are consist of. So don't just take what they say as fact. Have the confidence to challenge their viewpoints, whether that's their particular